Hello and welcome to the Open Grants Reviewers video collection. My name is Daniela Faderi and I'm the co-founder and director of PreReview. In this video, we will go over some examples on how to provide clear, constructive and actionable feedback to a grant proposal. This video is part of a collection of seven videos on the topic of addressing and mitigating bias in the grant review process. We invite you to check out the full collection by visiting the link bit.ly forward slash open grant reviewers dash videos. It may be particularly helpful to watch the video strategies to mitigate bias for grant reviewers prior to watching this one. In that video, we discuss six steps that a grant reviewer can take to write a review. In this video, we're delving a bit deeper into step four, make your feedback clear, constructive and actionable by analyzing and reflecting on some examples. We talked about the importance of providing feedback that is clear so that it's most likely to be interpreted correctly, constructive so that it's most likely to be well received and actionable so that it's most likely to be acted upon. But how do we go about doing just that? Let's look at an example together. Let's imagine we are reviewing a grant proposal and one of the concerns we identified in step three is that we believe a particular statistical test has been used improperly on the preliminary data to test the hypothesis. We think that if the applicant went ahead and used that test in the proposed work, the interpretation of the results would be compromised. How would you go about writing such feedback? Well, one clearly wrong way to convey this concern is to write something like, the applicant has no idea what they're doing and should consider retaking statistics 101. Given the distribution of the preliminary data, I doubt they'll be able to make meaningful conclusions on the results using the described analysis. Needless to say, this feedback is disruptive, even insulting, and it is lazy as it is not clear nor is actionable. Now, let's look at a better way to convey the same concern. Statistical test X is typically used for data that is distributed normally. The preliminary data presented in this proposal already appear to be highly skewed to the left. This type of distribution requires a non-parametric version of test X that makes no assumption on the parameters of the distribution of the data. I suggest the use of test Y. If the choice of test X is motivated by a particular strategy or other non-obvious analytical constraints, I recommend to justify that choice explicitly. This example starts with an interpretation of the concern presents the reason why we think it is one, and ends with a recommendation around what we think would be a better way to analyze the data. We also approach this feedback with humility, understanding that we may be wrong and that the applicant's choice may be guided by a particular strategy, in which case we suggest it gets explicitly discussed. Finally, we avoid calling out the applicant as the actor of the issue by depersonalizing our argument and use the statistical test or the choice as subjects in our sentences. Let's imagine another scenario. The proposal we're reviewing aims at studying the genetics risk of type 2 diabetes in an indigenous community in Brazil. Your concern is that the proposed approach includes sampling blood from the community but fails to detail how the community has been engaged in designing the study and the benefits, if any, the community will get back as a result of the research. How would you go about writing up such feedback? Well, once again, here we compare two very different ways of providing this feedback. We invite you to read and reflect on this example on your own and think of other examples or of concerns you may have and try out different ways of conveying your feedback using the interpretation, reason, recommendation, depersonalization framework. Unconstructive and unprofessional feedback isn't just useless to the receiver, 
but it can also be harmful, and the harm can be even larger for individuals belonging to traditionally marginalized communities. A group of researchers conducted an international survey targeting researchers in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, aimed at investigating the pervasiveness and author perceptions of long-term implications of receiving unprofessional peer reviews. The type of unprofessional comments that people reported sounded like, this paper is simply manure, or what the authors have done is an insult to science, or even more personal attacks, such as the author's status as a trans person has distorted his view of sex beyond the biological reality, or the author's last name sounds Spanish. I didn't read the manuscript because I'm sure it's full of bad English. The authors of this study found that traditionally underrepresented groups in STEM fields were most likely to perceive negative impacts on scientific aptitude, productivity, and career advancement after receiving an unprofessional review. This not only shows that unconstructive feedback is a reality in the space of scholarly evaluation, but also underscores the importance of training geared towards understanding the impact of bias and scientific oppression in this context. This is the end of this video. Make sure to check other videos by visiting the full collection at bit.ly forward slash open grant reviewers dash videos. This video was developed by the pre-review team for the Open and Equitable Model Funding Program in collaboration with the Open Research Funders Group and the Health Research Alliance. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please don't hesitate to email us at community at pre-review.org. Thank you so much for your attention and see you in the next video.